Hi, this is Jill Bretherton of Jill Bretherton Art here with a new video. Um, in this one, I'm going to be painting this picture of yellow roses in a glass vase. I did put the camera on the wrong side of my body, <laughs> so my arm keeps getting in the way. Um, I know for next time that that uh, needs um, changing. Anyway, I guess I wanted to do this video. I gave myself an hour, by the way, I should start. Um, I gave myself an hour and I um, used only one brush. So the reason for this was to uh, not allow me to drift and fuss and spend hours painting one painting when a lot of my paintings are really just about technique. I just want to improve my technique. So they are, um, yeah, they're nice enough to sell and I do sell them, but... Um, they're also like, I sometimes approach a painting with a specific idea in mind, like I want to, um, you know, do this or do that or try this or try that um, and take my, you know, techniques to the next level or just try something new. Or I've noticed something in a fine artist, you know, a great artist um, that I hadn't noticed before. And so I'm going to try that in this new painting. So. I'm not necessarily painting the masterpiece of all masterpieces. In fact, I've rarely even, I don't even think I've ever done that. I really just want to paint nice pictures and keep practicing my technique. Um, and so this one uh, was just another way of, I just wanted to get the lights right in the roses. Roses are really difficult. So I paint roses a lot um, because I simply want to just master them without getting a, into a um, formula. So a lot of rose artists have a formula um, and I think they're great. I honestly think if you're a beginner, they're fantastic to watch. But um, the trouble with those paintings is that they obviously don't have a very natural feel and they do feel very formulaic. One is the same as the next and the paintings are the same. So I do want to avoid that. Um, but I did want to just take, in this one, I just wanted to do the light, the warm and the cools and the just the, you know, the, the variations in the warmth and coolness of the petals. And I wanted to try and keep the petals translucent and full of light, like, um, you know, like roses often are, especially in, 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 a, in a good light. Um, so that was what I was trying to achieve here. And obviously, as a consequence of that, you don't want to be painting for hours. So... I decided to give myself an hour and to use only one brush. Um, and that was a flat brush. I think it's about a centimetre wide and it's pretty old and it can split. Um, and so it's what I'm, the point I'm trying to make is it's not an expensive or fancy brush. It's the sort of brush you might just have hanging around if you're a beginner right now. Okay, so let's get to the painting. So as you can see, I've done the background and I've started to map in some of the significant colours. So I started with the back because I don't like putting the back in last because um, then I feel like it looks a bit fake when it's um, fitted around the subject. Um, and also the leaves. I like... Um, to do whatever is behind first. Um, I don't like to fit things around. That said, if you see where the... I don't want to put greens or darks behind the petals, um, so I will leave myself enough space to do the petals on a clean... Um, this is oil paper that I'm using here because I don't want to have to try and achieve a translucent petal um, you know, while it's muddied over the green. So, um, you know, I do try to keep myself some space there. And here I am now just blocking in the darks and the lights. And you can see the rose on the right is slightly cooler and have a bluer than the middle rose, which is yellow and bright because that's the one receiving the most light. Um, and that that's what I'm going to try and maintain throughout um, the painting as well as keeping the light obviously on the glass and um, those sort of really warm um, this colour in the centre of this rose here was um, a real challenge I must say um, but you know 
you just have to keep working at it. And that, that was, that was what my, my, my challenge was today. Um, so, um, I got there in the end. So one of the other things you have to do when you're painting roses, um, or any, any, uh, flower particularly, um, and you want to achieve a, a sort of, I, I, I veer between impressionism and, um, realism and, um, I sometimes I do like a bit of expressionism. I must admit, I do get in a bit of, um, you know, sometimes when I'm feeling a bit, you know, fancy free. But I do, the reason I like to do these is because I think that it's better to go, to be as best as you can technically before you can free yourself up creatively um, with art. Um, I think it really does show the difference between an artist who's just throwing their art onto a piece of paper as opposed to somebody who has all the technical ability and the knowledge, but then has used that so that when they free their mind, they are actually creating a fantastic piece of artwork using their skill, but but also whilst freeing their mind at the same time. I don't know if, if that makes any sense to you, but I'll give you an example. Um, Salvador Dali, of course, is known for his melting clocks and his obviously... Um, expressionistic pieces but in actual fact Salvador Dali was an amazing technical artist um, a fine artist um, of the classical sort uh, before he ever turned to um, his abstract and expressionist pieces so it's all surrealist pieces whatever um, you would call Dali but um, and and there's a reason why there's a magnetism in his work. It's not just because of the subject matter or and it's certainly not because of his painting, because you probably wouldn't know really looking at his art that he is this great fine, fine art classical painter. Um, but the reason his art is so compelling is because he has used that skill that is already ingrained in him and, and and then he's been able to transfer all that technical skill into this um this hugely sort of surrealist and creative and compelling um piece of work and that's why it works compared to say somebody who does surrealism who who really has never done anything else and has always just sort of thrown paint on paper and done some strange things on canvas it doesn't i i think you can tell the difference i really do and another one is edward edward Ed, edvard munk I, I never know how to say his name but anyway the scream of course looks like a scribble um but how compelling is that painting and the reason it's compelling is because uh, you feel obviously the scream when you look at it and the reason you feel it is because the artist knew exactly what he was doing when he drew it or painted it or what, whichever you like to say. Um, so, you know, that's that's what I think. I love surrealism. I love expressionism. I love fauvism. I love anything where you just, you know, let let go. But I do think that to do that in a compelling way, you have to have the skill there in the first place, which is why I do force myself to do these paintings all the time. I have so many ideas about uh, paintings I want to do um, that are um, uh, more creative subject matters and um, styles. But I just feel like I wouldn't be able to pull them off really at this stage. Maybe I would. I mean, I probably would, but um, I don't want to yet. I just want to keep pushing and pushing and pushing and then start creating some bigger pieces. So with this one, I felt like I still needed to do a lot of work with my roses, and um, and that was where I was with that, at, where I was at. And one of the things I picked up, which I applied in this painting, was what I'm doing now here. This um, the uh, I hadn't noticed it. It's not something you always notice straight away when you're looking at paintings, uh, when you're an artist yourself, but. This, this sort of level of um, uh, sometimes where they put little highlights around things that aren't highlights. It's not like when you're a child and or when you're doing colouring in, you draw a black edge around everything and then you colour it in. But I have noticed in a lot of these wonderful paintings, they have somehow managed to put a, 
a shadow or a shade of darker colour next to a white colour in the background, you know, as though it's part of the wallpaper or or it's a shadow. Uh, so they're, any, they're able to highlight um, whatever's in front of it by pretending that what's behind it is a shadow. And some of them are so um, subtle that you, you barely notice them unless you are really studying the painting with a fine tooth comb. And so that's what I started to apply in this painting but obviously I've only got an hour so I couldn't um I couldn't uh you know spend forever on the the details um yeah so uh that's where that's where I was at with this painting um and I I just kept working at it until I was happy uh with it and you know by doing that of course you you each time you push yourself um through a a, a painting boundary and make yourself uncomfortable um and then you come out the other side thinking actually I did that I, I'm quite pleased with that then you know you've broken you know you've jumped another hurdle and you're you're closer to where you want to be and then the next time you sit down and do it um hopefully it shouldn't be as difficult of course it always is <laughs> I never find painting um I don't know it depends on the mood sometimes you just sit down and you just fly through paintings and you're just you know on form so to speak and then other times you know they're a struggle um this one wasn't a struggle I must say it was a struggle at times but overall it wasn't a struggle um yeah so the other thing that I think is a little bit of a trick uh when painting flowers particularly uh is what I'm talking about here is um, try and do at least three variations in colour um, and tone because that really brings a petal to life. Even if you think you can only see um, white and then maybe the darker shade of the white, say we're talking about a white rose and you've got the obvious white part of the rose and then inside there'll be a greyer, shadier part of the rose. If you look closely again at that rose, you are absolutely 100% bound to see another shade, whether it be warmer or a slightly different colour. Um, and once you put that on a painted rose, so say for instance you've got your white and then you've got your grey shadow and then somewhere you notice there's either as a flush of pink or a flush of blue or a flush of yellow and then you put that on the petal in, in, the, in the right place of course and it will literally bring what was quite a flat petal will bring it to life or flat flower and the same also with the leaves um, so you can see in the leaves that I'm doing here I'm not going into the greatest level of detail that a realist painter would go into and he would obviously spend many many hours not just he she <laughs> I don't know why I said he I suppose because the um some of the guys I'd been looking at before this were he and of course female painters were not um allowed to be that well known so we we do tend to draw upon um male resources at the moment historically anyway and so um uh, where was I going with that uh, he uh, la 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 what was I thinking he oh uh, yeah so the, he she would have gone into a lot of detail and of course I've only got an hour which I've speeded up obviously in this video um and you will see on the leaves there's you know at least three different shades again and variations on there also and I think there's a certain once you get um if if you're just doing expressionism or impressionism you know you can kind of really just be really free and you could probably achieve a pretty good painting quite quickly as long as you get the values right and you use some interesting colors um with something like this it's not quite the same because you're not as free um so what's important i think with a painting like this is um to get um, the shapes and the form and the values in. Once you have all those set in place, uh, say for instance at this stage in the painting, then you are actually more free than you think because you're not having to worry about um, how the 
whether this leaf is in the right place or that re leaf is in the right place or this petal is in the right place. You're now, you've done that. So now you can relax, almost take a back, a step back and think, right, okay, where are the really crucial pieces that are going to, going to make or break this painting? What, what, you know, where can I really add some drama? Where is the fine detail required? Where is there just an illusion of shadow or highlight that I need to bring out here? So you're, you're in a different level of painting at this stage. You're not worried about drawing anymore because you've done that. Um, you're now uh, worried about bringing this painting to life. So as you can see there, just uh, what I'm doing is, is, is restating, you know, the shapes and what, because I know they're there now. So now they're there so I can focus on getting them better um i'm not worried about drawing them anymore i'm just now i'm focusing on bringing them to life um so i don't know which stage of the painting i like best really it depends it depends what mood i'm in really so here we go and then in the background you can see let's go back to the background a minute you can see that um i like a lot of variation in the background make the background more interesting um, and, the, and, and the more variation there is, the more you can kind of also blend in so you can give the illusion of um, more um, le leaves in the background and what have you. See what I'm doing here is another one. I'm just bringing a little bit of contrasting colour here around this rose on the right so that I can create a contrast. between. So it can make it come forward, basically, is what I'm trying to say. Um, and I, I will keep fiddling with this for a while. So, yeah, I'm I'm really liking the I really was liking the way this this came out today. So, pretty happy with the um, you know the lights and the darks and the reflection on the glass. Um, and you know, working with this brush was actually quite difficult. Um, it was a pretty rough brush. Um, but again, it forces you to be disciplined with it, you know, I mean, I went to, uh, Singapore many years ago now, and I went to, um, a memorial for the Changi prison that was there. I don't know if any of you seen, have seen or read, read the book or seen the film King Rat. Um, but it, it's, it's a pretty good depiction of, um, Changi prisoner of war prison um when i went there obviously there wasn't it wasn't still there but they had there was a museum and they'd mocked up one of the prison cells to show you how horrible they were and they put you in it and then they lock you in and they close the door and it oh you know you're in there almost 20 hours a day 24 hours a day or whatever horrible anyway in the museum um, they had all the art that the prisoners had um, uh, created while they'd been imprisoned there. I mean, you know, I mean, you can't stop a creative, even putting them in prison. And they literally drew with, um, well, I don't know where they got their scraps of paper from. There, there was an explanation. I think they bribed guards or used toilet roll or whatever. And... Uh, um, in it, they 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 drew with um, mud, dirt, um, you know these are and they were they were incredible pictures considering the limited uh, resources they had. Um, so, you know, this idea that you've got to go and buy all this expensive, um, fancy equipment before you start a painting is really just nonsense. It's probably just a bit more procrastination than you really need. So. Um, Compared to the poor prisoners in Changi, I think I got a pretty good deal. Um, but um, gosh, they was, showed some really, really shocking. They depicted some pretty, really shocking scenes that um, went on in the lead up to their capture, which I, I'm not going to relate to you now because they are pretty depressing. But, um, yeah, I still thought it was pretty ingenious. And they had things like radios hidden. Oh, God knows how they made radios out of boot laces and, I don't know, bits of old springs and stuff. And 
hidden them in their shoes. It was incredible. Anyway, that's by the by. But the point I was trying to make was that you can draw with anything. So um, that was the challenge with this brush. Um, and also, it, it stops you fussing too much um, if you, um, you know, don't have um, all this range of brushes to choose from and what have, it, what have you. So... Um, yeah, I mean, some of my favourite pictures I used to do before I ever did oil painting was just um, paper and, and uh, literally a biro, a black biro, sometimes a blue biro. I, I did a hydrangea once in um, all blue biro. I actually really liked it. I have it hanging up in my bathroom. Um, so, yeah. So I'm going to just leave you with this now. I, you can see I'm just now adding some highlights to the tips of the petals. This is what I mean about almost you can relax now you've got the form you've got everything you need to create the shape so now you're just making it a rose um if it isn't already you're just sort of fine-tuning it really so and that's not easy i must say if you're new to uh, roses but the reason i do roses i don't know whether i did finish what i was saying earlier in the video the reason I do roses is because I think they are the hardest flower to draw. I'm just trying to think. I don't like doing tulips, I must admit. Tulips, you would think, so easy. Just a tubular sort of thing with four petals or however many petals, like a bell. Oh, I hate doing tulips. I, I have done tulips and I've done them okay, but I, I find them... I don't know whether I like them as a flower that much, maybe. That's probably what part of the problem is. Um, anyhow, um, not so keen on painting tulips. You'd think they would be very simple, but maybe it's the very simpli simplicity that makes them uh, difficult to bring to life uh, on, in a painting. I don't know. Whereas a rose is obviously incredibly complex and depth. And even a red rose or a yellow rose or a white rose has so many variations in shade and colour and warmth so and temperature. So I guess that's why I like doing roses. But also, I think if you crack a rose, you've cracked everything. <laughs> I think it's kind of unique in that way. It's so difficult. But um, I think doing a rose is probably much like doing a face. Um, it, it's pretty complex, the various uh, shades and tones that are required to bring it to life. So anyway, I'm really sorry about the hand. Put it, in, put the video on the, the wrong side. And also my hand is covered in eczema. So if you want to suggest any treatments, that's fine. I currently use moisturiser and a 1% hydrocortisone, which I've lost. Hence why it's looking a bit red in this um picture so I'll have to go out and get some more so I think I'm, I'm getting to the end of this picture now painting picture it sounds like I'm drawing a um a kid's um book Speaking of kids' book, I have done them and I will, I might do a video on um, children's books and writing because I do write. And the only reason I don't write at the moment is, um, while it's a long story, I don't want to go into, um, uh, but it, it took me away from writing and that uh, obviously being an artist, um, I had to have a creative outlet so I went back to um, painting um, um, hence what I, what you see now um, but I do write and I do intend to start writing again um, so look out for some videos if you're you know if you're not necessarily an artist you might be a writer also or an illustrator then I will definitely be getting back into all that and I can share some of my tips and what I've learned about the industry and um, uh, yeah what I how I um, navigate um, 
publishing and rejection, of course, which we all have to navigate and we all have to get pretty um, used to. Um, uh, so I may I may do some videos on that. Let me know. But mainly I'm going to be doing at the moment my art. I'm going to keep on with uh, with that um, for the foreseeable, because the next writing project I have is actually quite big and I'm not ready to um, start that yet because obviously it's a huge sacrifice once you start on a big project like that. Um, and um, yeah, I'm too busy actually, <laughs> I'm so busy. I don't stop at the moment. I don't know, I thought when my kids got older, I um, things would get easier and, and they are in the sense that I don't have to change nappies and get up 300 times in the night to deal with a child crying or needing food or needing a nappy change or being sick but there are other challenges like you know teenagers needing to go places and oh I seem to spend so much of my time with a broken up day um like today that I um I seem to get so little done um I, I just don't get a good run at it so um the book writing thing if I did the book writing it would it would take me away from my art again and I'm I'm just not ready for that at the moment because I, I I'm just really in the mood for doing all this so yeah I use my finger as well to blend um don't really like hard lines when it comes to flowers Less so on the leaves, you know, the leaves are okay with hard lines, but you can see the, you can see the brush now, um, the one that I'm using. I bought these from Amazon, actually, they're not that good, so I'm not going to recommend them. The, what happens is the uh, bristles, um, they separate um quite it doesn't matter whether you've got a lot of medium no medium they're quite dry it doesn't make any difference they just separate and they did from the word go and also the on I got a pack of five I think and two of them the heads fell off like literally the first time I used them so I thought that was a bit rubbish so I won't be recommending them I think I'm done here I'm going to um fast forward this to the end now I'm going to do, I've got two more videos in the pipeline, <clears throat> more roses, because um, it's not that I'm just going to teach <clears throat> roses or show you how to, I'm not teaching, I'm just showing you how I do it, but um, I um, I just feel that they're really useful to draw because um, they're difficult, and so if you crack them, you crack them, you can do anything, and also um, people like to buy them. So this will obviously go on sale in my eBay store. Um, if you want to see more videos like this, click the notification bell and subscribe. Um, I won't just do roses, obviously. I'll do um, landscapes. I do landscapes. What else do I do? Animals. I do my ink and watercolours. I might show you how I do my prints. Some of my prints that I print from home um quite easily and effectively um which just gives me another income stream and um yeah i mean there's lots to talk about so um just let me know uh what what you want to uh discuss whether you want me to talk about colors or um you know whatever it's up to you let me know see you again soon hope you enjoyed the video see you again soon have a great day Bye.